All right, guys, I want to talk about maintaining your dog's training. So originally I was putting together this list with our team with the idea of to give our clients something um, that once they've gone through training, how can we maintain this? What are like checklist type things that we can do? Because a lot of people, that's helpful, right? For me, it's helpful. You know, what what is really great is when someone can kind of just feel how do you put this, you know, at, at one with the dog training process, but that's hard. And so for a lot of folks, having um, very specific checklist items to do can be very helpful. So what we did as a team is we put together, this isn't, you know, the end all be all list, but we put together a nice list of daily, weekly, and monthly things that you can do with your dog in order to maintain your training once you've gone through the Transform Your Dog in 60 Days program. Now, if you've never done the Transform Your Dog in 60 Days program and just come across this, this video, then it's still a good resource for you. Um, but I really wanted to outline for our clients that, hey, once you've got some really nice results, how do we keep those results in a way that is as easy as possible? Owning a dog is always gonna be work, but what are the ways that we can leverage our time so it's as easy as possible, recognizing that people have work, activities, lots of things going on in their life, kids, you know, places to go, people to see, all that type of stuff. With that in mind, how can we best use our time? So that's what this list is. Daily, weekly, monthly stuff that is best use of our time that allows us to really maintain training long term. So let me get into daily. Daily. So um, one thing we talk about a lot is focused motion and focused non-motion. So focus motion, focus non-motion. Hopefully you can see that. Um, what I think a lot of the modern dog is lacking is, is mental stimulation. You know, if your dog lived out in the woods, it would be mental stimulation all day long, um, which probably isn't a good thing because out there it's like, hey, I might get killed and eaten today. Um, but nevertheless, you know, our dogs are much like us, that if we don't get mental stimulation, we get bored, we get... We, we start doing stupid things. What's that saying that you know always hear, your mom always told you growing up? Idle, idle hands are the devil's tool. And so, um, you know, we want to make sure that we're not giving our dog idle paws because that's the devil's tool. Um, and so, so anyways, we want to engage the dog's brain, their mind. And so uh, I do know a lot of people that have games that they play, nose games, uh, stuff like that, which is fantastic. But if we're looking for the most bang for our buck, the time buck is focused motion, focused non-motion. So focused motion generally would be like a focused walk. Not just any walk, but a walk where your dog's paying attention for at least a half hour. That does a ton to keep a dog's mind calm and relaxed and you know really sets the dog straight as far as their mindset goes, as well as focused non-motion. So focused non-motion would be um, like a place command, go lie in your bed for a half hour or longer, do a down stay for a half hour or longer, do a sit stay, you know, for a good period of time. Um, but if you, we try to get our clients every day to do at least a half hour focused walk and at least a half hour of a place or a down stay. If you can do that, that's probably the biggest bang for your buck that you could ever do. Now, drop my pen. Um, do as much as you can, of course, and as much as you want to do, but those are two very good things that you can do. Um, also, try to make sure that you're doing place during meals. Uh, we like this one. You know, uh, a lot of folks complain that dogs beg at the table. Well, do place during your meals. Just checking my notes here. Do place during your meals, and that's going to be super helpful. Now, these are the absolute musts. Again, there's a million things that you could do in addition that you should probably do. Make sure your dog's waiting at every door, not every door, make sure your dog's waiting at the front door, the back door, make sure you know, that your dog is um, sitting before you give them their meal, make sure, you know, do other stuff. But as far as like, if I had to tell you just do these things in order to maintain training, it would be this, focus motion, focus non-motion every day, 30 minutes of each. The place command doesn't even have to take any time because you do that while you eat a meal, while you watch TV, while you work on your computer, stuff like that. So that's daily. Now, boy, I probably should have done better with uh, an eraser today. So weekly, things that you want to get in the habit of doing every week. Weekly. Um, number one, doorbell stuff.
So get in the habit of practicing your doorbell behavior. Now doorbell behavior is different depending on the house setup, but it's typically the same in its, in its sequencing for most dogs. There's three bite-sized chunks when somebody rings our doorbell. Because our dog is at the door barking, which is okay. It's okay for our dog to let us know somebody's there. But now we want the dog to come back and stay put. So first bite-sized chunk is we gotta work on the recall. So our here or our come command, the dog's barking at the door here, we call the dog away. Second bite-sized chunk, we need our dog to do a down stay or a place command, ideally. I prefer that over a sit, um, but sometimes just for fun, switch it up and do a sit instead of a down. Um, but anyways, have your dog come back, do a down, do a place. Um, and then third bite-sized chunk is the dog's gotta stay there while I go answer the door. So that sequence of events, those three little bite-sized chunks that turn into one sequence, you wanna practice that at least once a week. Now, I'm talking, of course, after we've done the TYD60 program, and now we're in maintenance mode, um, maybe you have people coming over a lot and you're gonna be practicing this a lot. But if you're like a lot of people that we know, you might not ha be having people come over a lot, so you wanna make sure that weekly you're practicing that doorbell behavior. Um, all right, weekly, practice step back recall. Now, step back recall is a big one if your dog has aggression or re reactivity issues. And it's a big one if your dog has hyper, hyper happy, you know, out of control issues when, when the dog greets somebody. Now, if you haven't done the TYD60 program and you're not familiar with what the step back recall is, it's a really great method for getting your dog's focus on you rather than on the object that they're aggressive towards or the object that they're way too excited to see. Um, so anyways, practice that step back recall once a week. Um, here's a good one. Practice your out of sight down stays once a week, if not more. So an out of sight down stay is you put the dog in a down stay and you walk around the corner and now you're in the kitchen spying on the dog, making sure the dog's staying in the living room, for example. Um, practice that once a week and the more you practice, the more you can get further and further and ask the dog to do it for longer and longer. But what you don't wanna do is the mistake that a lot of people make where they want the dog to do an out of sight down stay, meaning Oh, I need to go grab something in the bedroom. You stay there and they go and they're gone for five minutes. They come back, the dog got up and they're like, he didn't stay. Um, it's something that we have to practice. And so get in the habit of practicing that, you know, once a week, um, out of sight, down stays. Um, and another good one here is um, down stays with high value distraction. So, for example, uh, when we were talking about this as a team, one of our trainers, Dana, said, um, I've had like three people this week say that they're struggling when they bring out the hose. That the dog kind of goes crazy. You know, it gets way too excited. Okay? Um, that's a, you know, she was having her clients, and I'm asking you guys to do this. Um, uh, do a down state around high-value items. So, for those dogs, a hose is a high-value item. Maybe for your dog, it's a ball, it's a treat, it's a toy you know, something like that. Um, uh, it could be a lot of things, but do a high value downstay, sorry, do a downstay around high value items, showing the dog, hey, you, you really gotta work on this. And you gotta stay put no matter what is going on. The last thing to do weekly is just practice recall. Recall being coming when called. Just do a five to 10 minute session where um, you bring back some food rewards, you make sure that you've got your training collar, and you just work on recall and you know keep that fresh in your dog's mind. All right, so that's weekly stuff that you wanna do. Very important. And it's easy. You know, you can take five minutes a day and do most of this stuff. Um, and you can knock it all out, you know, by doing it, or you can do a nice long session once a week or something like that. Now, monthly, monthly stuff to do. These are just things that are gonna to continue to add depth and make that training stick, because that's what we're looking for, right? We want to put in some effort. Yeah, everyone knows dog training is effort. We don't want to be working three hours every day on the dog training, but putting in a little bit of effort every day so that long-term this stuff sticks. So monthly, do some doggy push-ups. Doggy push-ups are the dog sitting next to your side, you have the dog down, and then sit, and then down, and then sit over and over, you know, and you have the dog do a bunch of those. Or you could be standing facing the dog either way. But when you do these doggy push-ups, it requires the dog to think about their positioning and to really hone in on sit, what sit means, what down means, and it's a really good thing to practice. Um, 
here's one that uh, I'll be honest, I haven't done, but it was it was a recommendation from Jessica on our team. <laughs> uh, long line around your waist. So what she uh, was recommending to do is put a long line around your waist and clip it onto the dog. And so with like a 20 foot long line, there's going to be like, you know, 15, 18 feet of slack, whatever, you know, there's going to be a whole bunch of slack. Um, and so walk your dog with that much slack using just the e-collar and just your body language. So your dog gets out of position. You're not using the leash to get the dog back in position. Just maybe a little bit of light stimulation with the e-collar um, and, uh, and your body language. What she was telling me is that when she has her clients do this, um, it really adds a lot of depth to the healing command and uh, really helps the dog understand a whole lot better. Because some dogs are kind of handicapped by the owner. The owner's constantly using the leash. And so the dog doesn't have to think very much. It just kind of goes with the flow. Oh, I'm a little out of position. Here's the leash. Whereas in doing something like this, we're not using the leash. The long line's just on there so the dog feels the weight of the leash. And it makes the dog a whole lot better. It makes the owner a better handler. So good idea. Um, this was Joe's idea. Impulse control. with fetch. So impulse control around fetch would be things like you have your dog sit and you throw the ball and you don't let him out of sit and then you let him out of sit to go get it. Or you have the dog, you throw the ball and you call the dog back to you before he's able to get the ball. Or a down stay while you're tossing the ball all over the place and then randomly uh, fetch, you have the dog fetch it, you know, something like that. And so um, we're not just crazy wild, we're gonna go play with the ball, it's we're throwing some impulse control into the mix. Um, all right, and one last one here, well, two, field trips and surfaces. Once a month, try to get your dog to a new spot, you know, be, and show the dog that, hey, obedience rules are the same in this new spot. Um, so try to do that at least once a month. Um, and while you're doing it, try to get your dog on different surfaces. Um, different surfaces meaning have your dog walk on a tarp, have your dog walk on the sewer grates. Dogs struggle with that, but that's good for them to overcome stuff like that. Um, walk in a sandbox, walk on um, you know, slippery floors inside of, a, inside of a pet store, walk on cement floors inside of a Home Depot. Um, you know, having dogs walk on new surfaces is very good for expanding their um, expanding their mind. It really is. You know, oftentimes people overlook that, but having dogs walk on these different surfaces is often very helpful. So, um, all right. So, uh, giving you some daily stuff, weekly stuff, monthly stuff. The reality is none of this has to take a whole lot of time. And if you put this into a simple checklist, you're going to find yourself in a great position where it's easy to maintain this. And so, um, so yeah, good luck. And uh, let us know if we can help you maintain your dog's training.